We're back to the Toll Education Celebrity Show, powered by the Beach Lifestyle Celebrity Segment. And I'm really excited to welcome the program gold medalist snowboarder from the Winter X Games three times, Kelly Clark. Kelly, thanks for calling. Thanks for having me on the show. Uh, I'm so excited to have you on. If I thought of any Winter X Games superstar, I think of you. So when I heard that you were uh, interested in coming on the show, it was just an absolute honor. That's awesome. All right. So, Kelly, tell our audience a little bit about your background for some people that have never watched the Winter X Games and stuff like that, and then we'll go specifically into your foundation. Well, I'm from uh, Mount Snow, Vermont. I grew up snowboarding. Um, I always say I started snowboarding before it was cool. I started in 1990. And um, I've had a very long, successful snowboard uh, career now. Um, This next season will be my 15th X Games. Uh, I've had the privilege of representing the U.S. at three Olympic Games. I have a gold medal and a bronze medal from those. And, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I love what I do. And it's, uh, yeah, it's been an amazing, fun career. I'm, uh, just about rounding 30 years old. That's a long, long career for a snowboarder. And I'm considered the, uh, veteran at 30, which I always think is pretty funny. Absolutely. So, again, and the importance is understanding that you were in the X Games and the Olympics as well, correct? The, the winner. Olympics, yes. uh, because a lot of times people forget that. I mean, I think of you in the Winter X Games, but I remember when first, I forget what year was when the finally the Olympics uh, had snowboarding and how uh, popular it was. Remember that? And uh, the excitement after finally it got so mainstreamed. Yeah, I think X Games did a really great job of, of bringing snowboarding into people's living rooms for a long time, helping it be accepted. So when it came onto the world stage at the Olympics, um, it was a kind of more of an instant success. It was first allowed um, in the Olympics in Nagano, 98, and it wasn't a very good showing. But then in 2006, from the broadcast um, time to how the how everybody did, I think it really really came on the scene and was accepted by mainstream America at that point. Absolutely, and I think it's because it's so cool. And, it, and I, I know I couldn't do it, so let's talk about how you started your foundation. Why did you start your foundation, and then we'll learn more about it. Well, I've, like I said, I've had a very long, successful career, uh, and I think as an athlete, at some point, um, you know, you have to be about yourself. You have to, um, you're chasing down your own goals, your own vision, you're putting yourself first a lot of the time, and I just kind of stepped back and thought, well, perhaps it would be better if I didn't put myself at the center of everything that I did, um, and I looked around, and I knew what my journey was growing up, um, you know, it's no secret that snowboarding and skiing, for that matter, are, aren't always accessible, they're expensive sports. Um, and I wanted to create opportunity, and I wanted this sport that I love to be accessible. So um, I started the Kelly Clark Foundation three years ago, and we aim at making youth successful through the avenue of snowboarding. And the people who get involved in this at first, they have no idea specifically what snowboarding is all about. So that must be fun for you to kind of uh, explain that to them, or, or are they familiar with it? <laughs> We have two different programs running right now. We have the scholar program, which is more targeted at like a higher level athlete of someone who's kind of pursuing the same career that I have. We fund kids to go to Mount School to pursue their dreams in snowboarding. Um, and we've simply funded just about 25 kids over the last three years to do that. Um, and then we also have our passport program, which is, you know, getting the kids who've never seen snow, who've never been on a snowboard. We partner with other on profits and we get kids out on the hill. So we're both in both uh, we're an opportunity and getting kids out on the hill. Let's talk about the ones that never have had that opportunity. Uh, what organizations are you partnering with in, er- in areas where people have, uh, have you been able to get those people involved in snowboarding? Um, this last round of grants that we gave out, we partnered with Stoke Mentoring and we partnered with the station camp here in Mammoth, California. And um, with both instances, uh, you know, Stoke has more of a, a mentoring program where they use uh, the Avenue of Action Sports to uh, mentor and connect with youth. Um, they have bases both in California and in New York City. And then with the uh, station camp here, they have a camp that partners with other nonprofits, and I think they had an outdoor outreach up, and they had a crew of kids two weeks ago here that I went and, and hung out with, and I think they even had some Iranian uh, refugees that had never seen snow, never been on a snowboard. Um, it's really just kind of broadening these kids' horizons. 
And, and it must be so cool the first time you see somebody go on a snowboard that's never been, or you've even been exposed to uh, going on the slopes. Yeah, you know, I think there's things that I definitely take for granted. I, I'm I'm standing in my house right now watching it snow, and that seems very normal to me. But I forget that that's uh, not everyone's normal. So you do get some of the kids that are coming have never really seen snow or have never had the opportunity to be exposed to going to a ski slope? Is that pretty yeah, much? Yes. No. Exactly. Never, never touched it. Never seen it, and all the things that I take for granted. Um, they basically put it in perspective for me and, and allow me to see how special my life actually is. So, do you teach skills a, a bit from the uh, foundation as well, and going into sp- the basics of it, the start, and things like that? Um, you know, we're partnering with organizations that that run programs very well and, and have that structure in place. Um, <clears throat> so, I personally don't. Um, I don't give what you would say lessons or something like that. There's usually a big crew that's well trained in that. Um, I'm usually just kind of there for the support and and for the discussions and to help uh, bring the awareness to get the awareness out that uh, what you're doing with your foundation, raise money and uh, provide those opportunities. Then, right? Yeah, and what we really want to want to do is is uh, you know it's, it's youth development. It's it's giving them the skills. You know, it's no secret that sports. You know, increase self-esteem, help with goal setting, help with school attendance, all the things that sports do in a, in a kid's life that I, that I experienced growing up. You know, we want, we want to do that through the avenue of snowboarding. And at the same time, we want to in, inspire kids to dream and allow them to know that nothing is impossible. And, you know, with the display of, of my life and my career and me getting to share that with these kids, you know, it's, it's, it's the testimony of what my life has been to say, hey, nothing is like out of out of reach. So, what are some of the challenges of running your own foundation? What have you learned from uh, uh, doing this? You know, running a, a nonprofit organization is, is just like running a for profit organization, except you make as much money as you can to give away instead of keep. Um, but all that being said, it 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 has all of the um, all of the same challenges of a of an everyday business, and and ultimately, right now, I'm snowboarding full time, <laughs> which. Um, I'm not sure if, if everybody knows, but that is quite a, a involved career, and it, and it doesn't stop when the snow stops. It, it is a year-round job where I'm, I'm training, and uh, especially leading into an Olympic year now. Um, so, you know, it's very time-consuming, but at the same time, you know, I want to be able to pour my efforts into something that's going to last longer than my ability to perform. It's going to, you know, be in this industry and influencing longer than my body can hold up in this sport. And uh, so you have a great team around you then to help you keep the foundation rolling, especially with all how busy you are, right? I do. You know, we're we're a real small um, startup and a grassroots organization, but I have a great uh, board of board directors, um, and I think that the size of my foundation, you know, those are the people who pick up the slack, and those are the people who help carry it forward with me. And you know, over the last three years, we've given out almost fifty thousand dollars, and uh, that's that's tremendous for a for a relatively new organization, and um, you know, I, I look to use my platform and my influence to continue to strengthen it and build it and, and, and help it be sustainable, um, you know, long term. What is your ultimate goal for the foundation, Kelly? Um, you know, I, I definitely dream about the days when we say we've given out a hundred thousand, five hundred thousand, um, million dollars cumulative. I, I dream about those, but you know, ultimately, I want to look back on snowboarding and see that we. It's a better culture. It's a better sport because I was a part of it. And I want to instill a values and, and principles to help people be successful through a sport and ultimately successful in life. So we want to, we want to see whole, um, uh, kids, you know, come out of this, this sport and out of this organization, um, they're more successful people as of being involved with us. Okay, and so uh, from that, you, your hope is, what types of fundraisers have you done so far, Kelly, to help uh, raise money for the organization? Uh, you know, we've done some golf tournaments. Um, we've done some dinners, some benefit things, and uh, ultimately with, with what, what my lifestyle and my, my schedule permits right now, um, we kind of learn that we don't have to necessarily reinvent the wheel um, and take on huge, huge projects, but there's a lot of really great organizations that we can either partner with, um, associate ourselves with, to generate awareness and generate funds. So 
Um, there's been a few different partnerships with the Weston Hotel here in town, um, with different organizations where uh, we're able to accomplish our goals without a lot of overhead or a lot of input at this time because that's not necessarily what our uh, our resources don't necessarily allow that right now. So it's, um, yeah, we're moving forward and, and we're looking to do more fundraising, obviously, but right now we just kind of look for the partnerships and the like, like visions and uh, partner up and and go that way. Well, fantastic. I have a couple questions before I have to let you go. And one, the one question is, I guess, specifically the training uh, involving snowboarding. I mean, again, like I said, it's such a difficult sport. It's a, it's a dangerous sport in certain ways, but you said you're doing it year-round. How, you, how do you keep your body maintained and in shape so that you can continue to do it all the time, not have really breaks? You're constantly competing or training. Our contest season goes from December through the end of March. Um, our spring and fall, we have a few weeks off here and there, but ultimately um, we start up with training camps, and I spend between six and eight weeks on snow in the summer between New Zealand and Mount Hood um, in Mammoth spring camps here. And so um, it's very involved, but, you know, I think the, the preparation that I do physically enables me to... Um, you know, have a long career and be consistent year after year because it's like, you know, the the Olympics are, I don't know, under 10 months away right now, but I'm not cramming for a test. I've been getting ready slowly and surely for the last four years, building up my body, building up my strength. So it's it's a lot of maintenance, and in the summer I can build my strength a bit, um, but I have to stay on top of it because it is a very demanding sport. Um, but, you know, we look like risk takers, I think, on some levels, but we're very calculated risk takers. <laughs> So tell us, tell your training, your training regiment every day. You get up at what time and where do you, what do you do? Uh, depends if I'm on snow or not. Um, if I'm on snow, it's more of a maintenance program, but it would, it would look like I'm getting up around eight. I'm on the mountain by 10. I spend between three and four hours on the hill. I come down and I have about two hours at the gym based off of, uh, core cardio mobility, um, maintenance strength programs but then in the summertime um i have a much more in-depth kind of strength building routine where i'll have three strength sessions a week i'll have five sessions of core i'll have five sessions of mobility i'll have two of agility uh four of cardio and all of those kind of mix and match so any one day can hold two or three activities that i just listed off so it can be between two and five hours um, of activity in the gym and or on my road bike. So um, it's a very demanding <laughs> uh, fitness routine. But, you know, I think in the last few years that I've really, really committed to this, uh, I think they know how to train ski racers and, and baseball players. And there's not a lot of data. Um, it's such a new sport. You know, they don't know what's good for a snowboarder. They don't know how to train a snowboarder. So I've been kind of on that journey of developing that with some of the top um fitness people out there and and it's been amazing to see the consistency that it brings to my career and um the injury from injury prevention side of things alone um it's, it's been amazing so it takes a lot of input but uh you know i demand a lot out of my body so it's, it's worth it in the long run do you see yourself when you were when you retire from snowboarding to be involved in this process of showing people how to stay in shape in that way and be a spokesperson and also uh, a mentor to other snowboarders to say, hey, here's the training regiment that works and what's needed to be successful? Yeah, I think so. You know, as I'm uh, kind of the later part of my career, I definitely see a higher value for it than I did when I was young. So even if you're to tell some of your kids right now the importance of, um, you know, building up their fitness, it's not always received, but, you know, hopefully I can lead by example. Um, in the short term, and my results will speak for themselves and, and how my body's been able to hold up with the consistency and longevity of my career, I think, will be a great avenue to display that. Um, and I've invested so much in this sport. You know, you can tell by how how much effort, how much I want to build out my foundation. That I'm going to protect that investment that I've made. I've spent 15 years in this industry and in this sport, um, you know, building it up. So whenever I do stop competing, I, I don't see myself... Um, shifting gears and doing something totally different. I'm going to continue to have some um, influence and so into this sport through my foundation and, and hopefully through, um, you know, the example of my career. Well, fantastic, Kelly. Where can we find more information on you, learn more about your foundation and more about you? 
Uh, you can go to kellyclarkfoundation.org. Um, that's all well, my info and all the info about the foundation, ways to support, ways to be involved, and uh, more on the history. Do you have a Twitter and Facebook f- fan page? I do. I'm uh, I'm Kelly Clark on Facebook, um, and then I have uh, Kelly Clark Foundation, so it's Kelly Clark FDN, and that's my Twitter handle and my Instagram. All right. Well, fantastic, Kelly. Thanks for uh, taking the time in your busy schedule to come out and talk about your foundation. You're doing fantastic things, and good luck to you in the Olympics. So take care. Thanks so much. All right. Take care, Kelly. Bye-bye. You're listening to the Total Education Total Tutors Show, powered by the Beach Lifestyle Celebrity Segment. We'll be back in just a moment. 